G'day everyone. We've all seen shutdown stories about the TSA employees working without pay, because TSA employees are the federal employees that most people actually see, especially when they stop giving a shit and start blasting dirty Kanye and Drake tracks over the loudspeakers at JFK. But the vast majority of employees copying it sweet because of the shutdown aren't in border security. They're in science. Science organizations have been hit hardest by the shutdown. NASA has furloughed almost 90% of its staff. NOAA has given half its work as the temporary boot. Same for most of those on payroll at the US Geological Survey. Oh, and all 19 Smithsonian museums are now closed. Sure, essential science is still happening. USGS is still sending earthquake alerts and NOAA is still sending out weather forecasts. That said, they can't update the forecast models of hurricanes and stuff like that. But that doesn't seem like it would cause any major issues. But right now, most US science is as dead as this lab skeleton, part of the skeleton staff that's now running the NIH. There's been so many tragic victims of the shutdown, but clearly the most tragic is the loss of PandaCam. Smithsonian scientists have turned off the live feed at the National Zoo, so right now you cannot watch Tian Tian, Mei Jing, and Bei Bei being adorably ridiculous in real time. What am I even paying my goddamn taxes for? Trump, you can take my tax return, but don't you dare take my panda cam. Not surprisingly, shutting down pretty much all of US science has some pretty bloody serious effects. A lot of research is time sensitive, so if you don't capture that data now, the research is going to be lost forever. Once we start paying TSA workers again, they're going to stop playing Kanye mixtapes and we can go back to the standard clusterfuckery of TSA lineups. But it's not the same for scientists. We'll never be able to go back and get that time-sensitive data that we've lost. For example, California's seafood levels have been painstakingly monitored every winter for more than 70 years, so we know how to set fishing quotas. But like last year's fire Festival, this year's California Fisheries Seafood Expedition was cancelled moments before liftoff. Why? Well, surprisingly, neither Jar Rule or unpaid salaries were to blame. It's because their bloody research ship is owned by the government. And the government is, well, you can guess the rest. So even if the shutdown ends today, We'll never know exactly how many California rolls 2019 could have brought us. That data is lost in the human scientific record. Look, in all seriousness, this isn't just about my sushi. The world's longest running study of wolves has been going on continuously every year for more than 50 years so we can understand the effects of predatory species. Until now. Researchers want to do the work, but because the National Park Service is shut down, scientists can't actually get into the park, you know, where the wolves live. Because of Trump, this will be the first winter since 1958 that we haven't recorded information on those wolves. We'll never know how many wolves there were in the winter of 2019. Never. And it's not just data here on Earth that's being lost. American taxpayers, you paid about five billion bucks to build the Chandra X-ray Observatory, hailed as the most advanced, most precise, most epic telescope of its kind in the universe. Right now, it's basically floating space junk because the people trained to operate the thing are based at the Smithsonian. And you remember what happened there. This is not just going to leave a huge hole in our mapping of the universe, but that Chandra X-ray satellite it can't survive without human operators. Reserve money is currently shelling out for a skeleton support team to keep it in orbit, but that funding's about to run out too, and if the Chandra is left to drift for more than a few hours, solar radiation will destroy it. That would be $5 billion, about as well spent as building a giant wall, wouldn't you say? A program director at the NSF put it this way, the Chinese are moving ahead, and the Germans are moving ahead, and the Europeans are moving ahead, and we're stuck arguing over a fence. We all know the shutdown's not going to last forever, but its effects on science will. But what do you guys think? Are you a scientist affected by the shutdown? We'd love to hear your shutdown stories, so write to us in the comments below. Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching SciQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.